Okay, welcome to our Eid of Shabbat edition of our class on Parasha, Parasha B'midbar. And of course, we are only two days away from Eid of Shavuot as well. And we might include some thoughts and connections of Shavuot to our Parasha. Today's question is, how irrational is hatred against Jews? How absolutely unreasonable are, is the anger and anti-Semitism that has gone on for thousands of years and goes on currently around the world? We are currently in a situation in the Middle East, but in Israel specifically, where hatred is raging. Acts of violence that express this hatred are absolutely out of control. But if you think about how irrational that really is, um, look at from the Arab standpoint, there's 22 Arab nations in the region, not to mention the many other non-Arab Muslim nations in the greater region. Um, there is a sliver of land called Eres Israel. The truth is, is that um, there's a choice to integrate into this wonderful country, Israel, and there's also a choice to be accepted into the many and some very wealthy Arab countries. Where does this anger come from? Is it really because of the land itself? Uh, you can really say that the latter half of the 20th century, going into the 21st century, is an anger expressed by our brothers descended from brother Ishmael, son of Abraham Abino, while in the earlier part, in the first half of the 20th century, you can say that the anger expressed and the anti-Semitism and the uh, horrible persecution, we don't, you know, we're talking about the, the Holocaust at least, was from another uh, type of enemy, or you can say background, uh, ethnic background, do you want to call it our brother Esav? Does the European countries descend? Uh, probably at this point in, in history, they've been dispersed so many times and so much, it would be hard to really make that statement. But perhaps our other brother and um, another type of anger from a different region and from different peoples were expressed in the first part of the century. And of course, it's being ex expressed for centuries and millennia. But if you look at the European anger, how irrational is that? Uh, the, the, the fury of the Holocaust, how unreasonable was that? Um, was there really a threat? Was there an economic threat? You know what a meager percentage of the population that we represented in Germany or any other place in Europe? Oh, yes, we had influence. Yes, we always made an economic impact. But all in all, we couldn't have really posed a threat to any of those countries. It seems that the anger, the outright fury, which manifests in violence and acts of anti-Semitism, really is a reason, unreasonable and irrational. And we're gonna to try to use our parasha and the idea of flags, yes, flags, to try to describe and explain this uh, tragic, and shocking phenomenon, we can call it. Well, we go to our parasha Bimidbar, which is relatively uneventful. There's a census taken of Am Yisrael. And then there is a formation in the desert, which directs Am Yisrael uh, whenever they will be, <clears throat> as long as they will be sojourning and, and, and traveling in that desert. It turned out to be longer than expected, <clears throat> 40 years. <clears throat> that they were well, 39 years from this point, that they would exist in the physical formation that is instructed in Parashat B'midbar. And specifically, it's a formation that is represented by Degalim, flags or banners. We're going to share a screen soon, shortly and, and analyze a single pasuk. Um, but before we do, let me just recite that pasuk to you. It's in the first pasuk of the second pedic of the book in Parashah B'midbar. This is in the second year, in the second month in the desert, which means in the beginning of the month of Iyad, in the second year in the desert. And the instructions, the charge to Moshe, to the people through Moshe Rabbeinu, is Ish al-Dikhlo be'otot le'bet abotam yahanu 
B'nai Israel, that each man or people on based on their flag or banners, Be'o taught with signs, Lebet Abotam of their lineage and of the households from which they emanate. That is how B'nai Israel should encamp and should dwell in the desert. Surrounding Ohel Mu'ed, which of course Ohel Mu'ed um, is now referring to the Mishkan, which houses, of course, the Idut, the Luchot, the Aron, which, how, which encases the Luchot. That will be the centerpiece. We're told by tradition, Shefet Levi was around the Mishkan and further away at least 2,000 Amot buffer zone in between, there were the tribes. How did this formation look? Well, the parasha uh, goes into all these specificity of this formation. There would be three tribes to the north, to the, um, to the east, to the south, and to the west, which three tribes, and each tribe had their own degel, uh, had their own banner had their own flag. Now, we're told by the commentaries that the Torah was specific to tell us that not only al on his flag, but be'otot, with signs. Rashi brings down, uh, based on the Midrash, that there was a color of each flag, and that color was the same color that represented each tribe on the Hoshen Mishpat, on the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol, each, was, was, each tribe was represented by a precious stone. <clears throat> that is the same color of that precious stone that was the flag or banner of each tribe. However, many other commentaries speak about the fact that we already have otot, we have signs that were passed down traditionally from our father. It's actually explicitly in the, in the Torah, our father Yaakov Abinu, which sort of gave analogies and you say nicknames of every tribe. Of course, we know Yehuda the lion, Dan, the snakes, uh, Zebulun, the deer, et cetera, et cetera. And we know this from beautiful paintings and stained glass windows that adorn synagogues throughout the world, throughout history. Um, and that, say the commentaries, was also the insignia on every one of these flags or banners, perhaps the color and the sign. And it says, Lebet Avotam, according to some, including the Amich Tavar, there was also many, uh, you can say flags, subcategory flags, not just for every tribe, but also for every household um, or grouping of families within that tribe. And all of this would be in the formation of three tribes, each in the four directions, which surrounded the Shevet Levi, which surrounded the Mishkan and the Luhat. Okay, so with no further ado, I'd like to share now some information with you that's going to seem uh, somewhat dramatic and surprising. And here are our sources. So the flags, there's our pasuk on top, ish al digla in blue, be'otot in red, the bet abotam yahanu ben Israel, and then in brown, meneget sabib le'ohel mu'ad yahanu. There's our feature pasuk. The Midrash speaks grandly about this idea of degalim, of flags or banners, and feeds off of the various sources that we have in Tanakh that mention words with the root of Dalad Gimal Lamed, Degel. We find one source in Tehillim, and we find multiple sources in the book of Shir Hashirim. Let's go through, let's read through quickly these various sources in uh, the Midrash of Bimidbar Rabbah and get a taste of how the Hachamim interpret the importance of these Degalim and the Pasuk based on these other Pesukim that we find. So we're going to look at source where it says Bimidbar Rabbah. Bet means, we'll call it the second source of the word Degel, Ish al Deglo. And it quotes a famous pasuk that we know from Tehillim because we recite it every day in the Mizmor of Lam Nasiyah, Mizmor of David, in between Asher and Ubal Sion. And here it is. God says in Tehillim, We shall rejoice in your salvation. Ubshem Elohenu Nidgol. In the name of God, what does that mean, Nidgol? We will call out, we will praise. Well, you have, of course, there the root word, Degel, 
inside that word nidgo. Says the Midrash, Amru Yisrael HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the nation told God, We're rejoicing in your salvation, that which you did for us in your name, which is, Ushem Elohim Nidgo, in the name of God, we shall, shall we say, flag, flag it up. Because God established his name in our name. And made us flags. In other words, that the flags somehow identify our relationship with God. Nice, very strong statement. More than we thought uh, in the surface viewpoint that flags really stand for. Look at the next source. The next source says, God embraced and demonstrated an extra special love to Am Yisrael, that created the structure of flags and banners with us. So we should be recognizable and identifiable. How do we know it's a great love? We quote now the first pasuk from Shira Shirim. We know this because we read it every Friday night. He brought me to the house of wine, and his degel, his flag upon me, is a demonstration of love. And says the continuation, House of wine is symbolic of Har Sinai. When God revealed himself on Har Sinai, 22,000 angels descended with God. Quotes a pasuk to support that. And then it says, Also, the angels themselves were in a formation of and adorned with or embracing flags. As it says, and here's in the next quote from Shira Shneem, Dahul Merbaba. The uh, flag mirbaba of the myriads of the tens of thousands referring to the angels. When Am Yisrael saw the angels that they were um, honored and they had the merit of having these flags, they were yearning for, they were desiring these flags as well. And they said, God, please give us that opportunity. It was the flags as well. Um, and the last source, finally, is the most powerful. Also starts from Shira Shirim. There is source Dalit here on the bottom. Ish al Deglo Beoto, the quotes our pasuk from the parasha once again. And this is a pasuk from the end of Perek Vav and Shira Shirim. Mizot Moshaha. Who is this that is being looked upon like the dawn? And the Midrash reacts to that pasuk and says, Kedoshim Ugdolim Hayu Yisrael B'Dichlehem. Israel, I'm Israel, the nation of the desert were sanctified and exalted with their flags or banners. The whole haumot mistakilim by him, the nations were looking at them, utmehim in wonder. The umrim, and they were saying, Who is this being peered upon like the dawn? Umrim la haumot, shubi shubi, we know this pasuk so famously, shubi shubi hashulami, shubi shubi, young maiden. Come, return to us, says the Hachamim, commenting on that phrase. Join us, say the other nations. We'll make you important. We'll uh, elevate you. We'll put you in prestigious positions. Shubi shubi Come to us, return, and we shall look at you. We'll, we'll integrate you. And the answer of Israel. What do you have to offer the young maiden? What can you possibly offer us? Could it be like the encampment? And the Midrash says in that last bold line, can you possibly um, honor us the way that God has? like the greatness and the prestige that God uh, appointed us in the desert with the flags and the banners? I asked a simple question at the bottom. What's with the flags? What is going on? These flags, all right, they're wonderful. They are significant. They're identifiable. They identify us. 
they give us individuality with our tribes. But what is, what is the point um, being uh, demonstrated and exhibited by Hachamin here? That there was an incredible jealousy first of us, uh, by us, of the angels, and then by the rest of the world of us because of flags, because of banners. Make your own flags. What is going on here? Allow me to explain. Well, the first thing is that we know in parasha that's coming some weeks from now, this is Parashat Balak. Balak, the king of um, Moab, Balak ben Sipor, of course he commissioned Balaam to come curse the Jewish people. And, but his impetus, his motivation for doing so, the beginning of the parasha says, is that Balak saw, Kol asher asa Yisrael la emori. All of that which the Jewish people did to the Emori. You know that right before that, they waged war against Sihon, Melech Emori, and Av Melech Bashan, and they successfully destroyed them really miraculously. And he was, he feared because of that. And it says, Vayakos Moab. Moab, the country of Moab was disgusted because of Israel. Now, first of all, um, Balak could have feared other things besides the war against the Emori. Why didn't he fear what he knew, which was the splitting of the sea, Kiryat Shamsuf? We know from Yehoshua ben Nun that 40 years later, the spies, the two spies there testified that the inhabitants of the Kena'ani, where their hearts were melting, they said, because the fear of Kiryat Shamsuf, splitting of the sea, was well known. How about Matan Torah, the revelation at Mount Sinai? How about the miraculous existence in the desert? Why was it only because of the war against Emori? that Balak feared, and then it says they were, the people were disgusted, and she says that they were disgusted in their own lives, with their own lives. What does that mean? Well, you know, the Goyim, even the paganistic uh, Gentile nations of history, they can buy into God. They can buy into a God that performs miraculous supernatural acts. They can even accept and buy in to the fact that God might do that exclusively for a nation here and a nation there to save them. He's a kind and benevolent God. However, when God performs an act that in essence is a miraculous act, but only on behalf of one nation at the expense of another nation, that is a very clear and blatant statement that God makes that I am taking sides. I am making a choice. I am favoring a single nation at the expense of you and every other nation. And that's what happened with Emori. That Yisrael conquered the Emori. That made Balak not only fear, but that made the nation of Moab sickened with themselves. Because that is the hardest pill for the Gentile nations to swallow. And that is it's not us, it's them. We're second-class citizens. We're God's children, but we're not chosen. We don't have the lot. We don't have the faith and destiny of this nation, Am Yisrael. When they have to swallow that pill, they spit it out. They don't want to. They can't accept it. It sickens them. The only answer was Balak's answer. Obliterate them. Do away with them. We don't have to think about it anymore. If you think of what was targeted in the various generations of persecution against the Jewish nation, what was limited, what was restricted, um, how they began their acts of anti-Semitism and anger, it will always be otot. The mizvot that we have that were called otot, signs, because they were represented a covenant, a special relationship between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. For instance, they always restricted Berit Milah. They, they went after Berit Milah first. They went after observance of Shabbat. Both of those are called Otot. At points in history, they went after Rosh Chodesh as well, because that is referred to as an Ot. And we see this as an act by the Goyim throughout history, you can say, of jealousy, of being sickened by the fact that we have these special or taught, these confidence, those misvot that represent our unique relationship with God. You can say as, as, as opposed to, and maybe, uh, maybe at the expense of the other nations, at least in their eyes. 
you see, in fact, you know when it started, when Yaakov Abinu and his sons dealt with the raping of Dina with Shechem and Hamor, and then they made this incredible deal. Hey guys, of course they tricked them, um, but you can be one of us and we'll do you know, commerce and, and we'll integrate with you. If you only circumcise all male adults in the city and they said, great idea, we love it. You love it, you want them to mutilate themselves like that. Such a painful matter. The reason is because they were jumping at the opportunity to be able to embrace the ought, the sign, the covenant of the Brimila of circumcision. And likewise, we see that Bil'am himself in that very same uh, event with Balak after he was commissioned by Balak, in the end, when he saw his efforts of cursing were futile, what he did is he turned and gave his independent communication, it ended up being a tremendous beracha. It says he turned towards the desert and he saw Israel dwelling lishbatav in their formation, their formation of tribes, which was, of course, organized by degel, by flag and banner, by signs, by otot, as it says in the Torah, be'otot. And when he saw that, he said the famous pasuk, he uttered, matobu ohalecha Yisrael, Yaakov, mishkiotecha Yisrael. And then he says that he proclaimed, mi mana afar Yaakov. Who can count the dust of Yaakov? The Midrash says that he saw their foreskin, their brimila buried or detected that was buried under the sand, the dirt of the desert. And he said, who is like this people that have such a relationship and a connection to God? And he ended off with the famous word, I want to die like them. I want to share their faith. I want to merit their destiny. Let me be one of them. He revealed, and he represented the, the, um, the, the, the burning desire and the underlying um, you can say jealousy, but yearning of the Gentile nations to be them. But if we can't be them, the answer is annihilate them because we can't take it. It is really these otot of misvot that represent the special relationship that drives them crazy, that causes the jealousy, that manifests in the anger, the fury, and then of course the violence of the anti-Semitism. That is the way that we could explain what is going on currently well, in history in the world and currently, it is these flags that started the formation. It is these flags that began this idea, that broke this concept out. It is this degil, it is this ought, it is this um, insignia sign color system that really began the blatant and demonstrative relationship between Am Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But what did those otot surround? The key is that it was keneged, it was sabib, keneged sabib, ohel le'ohel mu'ad yahanu. It all surrounded the Torah because all of these signs are empty, if not for the fact they simply represent the great gift given to us by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what we have and what they don't have, which is the Torah. And that's why that flag system was all about revolving and creating a superstructure centered by our Torah, because the otot and the relationship is based on the substance of our relationship. The Torah Kedushah, which provides Am Yisrael with a system of life, of meaning injected into every step we take, every breath that we take, every word that we say. The Torah has something to say about every moment of our life. It's, it's an incredible relationship that we have of, um, of uh, a lifetime with God which is a relationship of substance and of meaning. And the, the nations, the Gentiles of the world look and they say, it isn't just God blowing a kiss. It's God injecting in our lives an absolute different reason and purpose for living. The Torah is what gives our lives meaning. The Torah is what injects objective 
into our lives in the Jewish nation. And so that's why these are taught, these signs are simply, they're physical signs, they're sometimes uh, spiritual, you can say, signs, esoteric signs, but all of them lead to the same end point. And that is we were given a Torah Kedosha. And that's why when we celebrate the holiday of Shavuot is a holiday that really represents um, what our objective or end goal became as a nation, to observe God through his Torah Kedosha, to inject meaning into us so that we can model for the rest of the world. But what that became was over history, a source of jealousy for the rest of the world, because that was a statement by God that they have it, they can observe it. They spend their lifetimes involved in embracing it and you don't. And that's what kills them. And that is the underlying jealousy, which causes the anger and the fury, which manifests in everything else that we see going on. Um, from their perspective, we hope and we pray like there are so many righteous Gentiles and have been so many over history, that they see the light, that the Torah observed by Am Yisrael benefits them in so many ways. And that the final objective in the coming of Mashiach, they will see the light and they will be enlightened by God, monotheism and our Torah and Am Yisrael and they, the way we serve God. But until then, we stand as the nation of Otot, of science, the people of flags, the people that represent God and uh, carry the special bond and, and this covenant with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and a covenant that always surrounds the foundation, the underpinning, the very soul and source of the Jewish people. And that is HaTorah Kadosha, which Barzat Hashem will be celebrating, commemorating this coming Shavuot, Hag Sameach, Tishkul Hashem Rabot, Da'amod and Shabbat Shalom, Borah.